Hello everybody and welcome back to what I believe is going to be the final episode of this episode. I don't know why my voice went so high there. But thank you guys for dropping by. My name is Mecha Will. We're playing Dark Souls 3. This is Blind's uh, post commentary describing the blindness of my adventures. But basically, we've done everything that we have need to. We've come here to the end, the precipice of the cliff. We've done everything. We've fought everything. We beat all the bosses. The last episode was quite a fun trip. If you guys want to go ahead and check that out, we fight the uh, one of my favorite bosses of the series. But now we come to the end. If you guys don't recall, uh, a couple of episodes we uh, we gave the eyes of a firekeeper to our little firekeeper here in Firelink Shrine, and that's definitely going to change the way um, the rest of this plays out. But if you guys have never seen the ending of the game before, I don't know what you're doing here. I I love you too. That's all I can say. Um, but we're going to be placing the final bits of ash, and, uh, we're going to see how this all pans out. And that, this is, there's not too much I can say. Uh, I'll, I'll be talking about the game at the end of it and my thoughts on it. I accidentally skipped that. You can fuck yourself. I'm sorry about that. I, I apologize, guys. So we finally gained enough strength. Fit to link the fire. We are a true lord and we're fit to link the fire. By the way, I was saying, fuck you to myself, not to you guys. I, just to those. I think we also... Alright, why did I skip the rest of those lines? Because it's just the same line she keep, she's been talking about earlier and earlier again. But basically... Oh my god, just listen to the music in the background. This is it. This is it. Ah, make no mistake when I'm on this damn thing. I'm back to the ground. I just want to compliment the beautiful noble music. Of Cinder. Yes, noble lords. Of which I've gutted with my sword. I apologize for that, guys. You guys were all worthy opponents. And Except for you, Yorm. <laughs> it seems like you got thrones now. Thrones of death. Surrender your fire. To the true heir. Damn. Yeah, we earned this, okay? This was not a walk in the fucking park. Give me that. Give, give, that was for me. Give, hand it over. What are you doing? It's not for you. It's for me. It's for me. I said it was for the true heir of fire. There it is. That's it. How can you see you with that mask on? Right, it's just an observation. Appears to be lots of ash. She is bequeathing upon my head. This is, this is weird. It's a weird little, uh, weird little thing going on. But it looks like... Wow. To the old gods of Lordran, deliverers of the first flame. This is this is really a poignant cutscene here. I appreciate the piano. Also, the piano just cut away, and I'm I'm kind of mad. Just have that just have that music playing all the time, please. And somehow I find myself in the kiln of the first flame. God damn. Now, if you guys have played the first Dark Souls, this place means quite a bit to you. If you haven't, it's also referenced quite a bit in all of the Souls games. Uh, but the kiln of the first flame is, well, it's where it all began. I'm very happy to see that we've found our way back to where all of the events happened. The start of the curse, the beginning of the cycles, the death of the first Lord Gwyn. The first burning to link the flame. It all happened here, ladies and gentlemen. This is the good this is the good stuff. This is where you find all the this is where all the tales, the folk stories, the myths, the lore. It's all written from here. And we're about to change all of that with our freaking sweet ass equipment. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. We're gonna have to find uh we're gonna have to find our friend here so we can uh Take a look at what's to come up next here. Obviously, we're doing this in tandem with our lovely co-host and contributor. Say hello, Dark Moon Knight. 
Hello. That's he doesn't sound like that at all. It kind of sounded like kind of sounded like that parrot that sits on Jafar's shoulder. Hello. To make a will. Thanks for thanks for having me. I wish I could imitate his voice. I mean, I probably can, but also got to keep his identity a little bit safe here. You guys are fucking animals. You know, I I don't know what what would happen if you guys got his like social security number, home address, bank account information, that kind of stuff. But, if you guys want to send him some love, his name is Dark Moon Knight on YouTube. He does a lot of Dark Souls 3 PvP. Um, and I'll put his channel in the description. My god, that's beautiful. That's that's beautiful. Walking out into this kind of location. If you guys may understand, when it gets closer to the end of the game, I'm going to tend to get a little bit more serious. Because I want the people that actually invested the time in this series to, like, feel something. That is the most, like, brilliant visage I, I could have imagined for the end of the game. This whole, this whole, the whole aesthetic going on right now of like the, the kingdom crumbling and the world, the world just warping, the sun burning and, and fading. Almost like it's melting. Everything just is, it's getting closer and closer to just the ultimate demise of our world. And the only thing that can stop it is this fellow right here. I don't, I mean, this, it's just a brilliant location I, something that's really astounded me about Dark Souls 3 in particular is the atmosphere um, which includes the music and and the arts you know the the art for these locations um, but just the grandeur of it all I mean it there's so much like it renders so much for the player like you get to see these large expanses one of my most favorite um you know, uh, overlooks of all time in any video game ever is the one that you get right after, um, uh, what's up dog? How's it going? Is the one that you get after Aldi's castle, um, right before and right after, um, the, uh, one of the, the drag, the little red dragon boss fight. It's this beautiful overlooking expanse that shows all of these trees and forests and cliffs and mountains and the beautiful daylight and the sunlight. Like, that's something that this game really nails, and it helps that the game's like visuals are just spot on beautiful. It's very perfect. I mean, the the graphics, the animations, yada yada. But like having the the art being able to encompass this dying world in such a brilliant, like well formulated, well well made way. It it just <laughs> it just rings the. The, uh, the beauty of my heart. Alright, this fucker wants to ruin my experience. I've had quite enough of this shit. I'm trying to get to the end of the game. Oscar? What's up, dog? I see we're getting invaded by the Nameless King, who we figured out his real name, guys. His name's Oscar. I didn't realize that. Figured it out. You're the one true god. Also, some bullshit there going on. There was some definite lag. Obviously, that, that attack is supposed to go in a different uh, direction there. He just, like, bowed. I don't know what's going on here, man. But he's got to be dead by now. I'm pretty sure at this point in time, he's dead. I don't know what's going on with your internet, man. But if you are watching this video, if for some, some happenstance of luck, I apologize for what happened and what we did to you. But you had it coming. And also, that was just the most dick thing my character can do at that point in time. So I apologize for that as well in the second, the second hand. But this, this is beautiful. Again, I'm going to equate it to a different game. Uh, Metal Gear Solid 3, uh, the last boss fight, the, specifically the boss chamber where you fight the last boss in. It's just fucking incredible. This is an incredible boss fight. The Soul of Cinder. And here we come. It's one of the most, well, to the end of everything. We've been with this series since 2009, Dark Souls specifically since 2011, and just being here at the at the end of it all, knowing that this is the last fight, the last battle. When I was coming into this as a as a player, I was like, "What the fuck is going on? Who is this guy?" I, I was expecting I don't know I was expecting something maybe Gwyn, something, but we got this Soul of Cinder creature, which is just an interesting an interesting guy. He seemed to have a lot of different attack moves. Uh, you know, he obviously he utilizes a lot of pyromancy and magic and hexes, just everything. 
So I was really confused about what this guy was supposed to symbolize because I didn't quite understand. I didn't see too much really building up to the final boss in the rest of the game. Fuck you, by the way. Um, but, uh, you know, I did see, oh, poison mist too. And backflips from the freaking wood grain ring from Dark Souls 1. It's just everything. And the fucking, uh, what's the fire within or the, you know, the little flame sweat. Like here he just uses everything that, you know, we used. And as we started fighting more and more, I started to realize that this guy, this was us. This is every PvP plea and Dark Souls player that I've ever fought. All of this built into this one boss fight. Holy shit, Kamehameha. Some Goku thrown in there. It's everything that the, that a man needs. And a woman as well. Uh, I appreciate that they went with the, you know, you can't cheap out on this boss fight. Like, you need to, you can't parry him. You can't do any visceral attacks on him. Like, you just gotta take your shit and that music. Take a listen to it real closely while we're here. Da, da, da. If you guys don't remember that theme, again. That's the theme of Gwyn. Remixed and remastered uh, as only the greatest of hip-hop artists and, and the, the hip-hop genre could do, but in a classical sense, which is beautiful. And the violins come in like... There's so many things that are done so beautifully and brilliantly right about this final boss fight. And the music, uh, you guys know how, how much you know music makes this game and makes all games. And to me, it's brilliant. It's one of my all-time favorite tracks off the entire album and of video games like of all time, in general, of all time. I hope that sinks into you guys. And if you guys respect my opinion at all and don't take me as just some crazy old fucker that doesn't know what he's talking about... Um, then you guys would be, you know, very surprised to see what's going on. But you guys can also see something I didn't really realize while I was fighting for my life right here. Um, the guy, yeah, I had no choice there. I had no choice there. The, uh, the guy, not only does Gwyn's, you know, theme pop up, but also Gwyn, the first Lord of Cinder, the first person to burn, the first person to, to link the fire, and the first person to start the curse, um, you know, it's connected directly to the linking the fire you know, is what we're fighting. As 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 it began, so it ends, and as the nature of this game has all been cyclical, this is a cycle, and we found our way to the end of it. Now, the choice of what we do at the end of the cycle is very important, um, but we'll see We'll see whether I'm a good boy or a bad boy. And some ladies, they like both. Let me tell you something. I know, I know a thing or two about the female. I sit here and play video games all day. How could I not? Ladies, let me tell you something. I can tell you all the all of the lore straight up about Lord of the Rings. Ladies, let me tell you what. I've read the Silmarillion like five times. I can tell you all the lore about Morgoth. Ladies, I can crush souls with the best of them. You don't know what that is? Baby, come over here. Let me show you. A anyway, um, you know, some, some ladies like the good boys. Some, some ladies like the little hair part. They like making sure that they're, the man's there. He's not breaking any laws. He's going to provide for them. Some ladies like it the other way around. Nothing wrong with either. But some ladies, they like the bad boys. And let me tell you what. Some Sometimes the girls that like the bad boys, we can talk to them. You know, they might be the bad girls. We'll put them like that. Or good girls that like bad guys, however it goes. You know, I've never really been a bad boy myself. But, uh, you know, sometimes those girls are the most desirable. Because they like going against the status quo. But of course you run into the issue of like so many people who are against the status quo that it kind of becomes the status quo to be against the status quo. So really the most against the status quo thing is to do is to actually be with the status quo, which has changed, which means you're no longer with the status quo, which is you know the conclusion that we've come to at that point in time. But it's a question for another time, because we're playing Dark Souls right now. But I just want you I just want you to think about that because our impact, good boy or bad boy, is gonna, it's gonna, well, you're about to find out real soon. Let's go ahead and take on this guy, the very final boss of Dark Souls 3. I gotta tell you, there's so many emotions that come with this boss battle, but I'm really sad. 
I'm real. I start. See, I start trying to parry him there to see if it's even possible. Because at this point in time, I noticed it was like Gwen, and the best way to defeat Gwen, we all know, is to just parry the shit out of him. So I thought maybe we could parry him, but I think it was a good, good choice for them to do what they did. Like it, it doesn't trivialize or marginalize the fight. Like if you could only fight Gwen without parrying him. Again, I think that was brilliant, allowing him to be parried in his own way, because parrying was like very much an advanced technique in the first game that, you know, not a lot of people utilized when they first played the game. In fact, not a lot of people even knew about it. I will fully admit, when I played the first game blind for the first time, I didn't even know that you could parry. Like, I saw it real quickly at the start of the game, and I never used it. I got through the entire game, I'm talking beating Gwyn and everything, without ever parrying somebody, ever. It was only until I started playing other playthroughs that I realized, oh, hey, there's this cool technique you could do called parrying. But it was brilliant. Oh, we got parried. Well, we can fucking get parried, no problem. Uh, there's a little bit of a double standard going on there, I think. Um, but the cool thing was that, like, you know, you were utilizing basically just this... It was a crack in his armor. You know, it was a way for you, like, the old Gwyn never would have been destroyed by parrying like that, but since he had been burned down to this husk, like, he made himself vulnerable, and uh, he was very much in a weakened state. This Soul of Cinder is a little bit different. Um, the Soul of Cinder is a conglomeration of us, of all of the people that have linked the fire, here to defend the flame for one final time, including becoming becoming Gwyn himself, the very first defender and, uh, and uh, husk of the first flame which we, we now see here. But this guy is much more powerful, I think, than Gwyn Lord of Cinder um, is. You know, he's a tough boss fight, as we can see here, but it's more than that, it's, you know, he's larger. And in, in Souls, the larger you are, it generally denotes how powerful you are as well. So it's like, I don't know, it's very interesting. To learn how to roll, dog. Should have rolled. And of course, like I was saying earlier, the boss location with all the flower petals and the swords stuck in the ground of like past warriors that have linked the flame. The killing of the first flame has been here through all the cycles. It's the only way to stave off the curse and the darkness, but it came with the price of, you know, extending the curse. It was kind of a catch 22 going on here. So, you know, biggest theme about Dark Souls is tragedy, and that's something that we see here in spades. And, uh, finally, we end it. We end all of it. And I can't tell you how important this moment is, uh, to the series. Yeah, we decided to smash some bosses. It was a good time. I definitely creamed the good Lord of Cinder. But, in a personal way, this is like an end of an era in my lifetime. The this, this Souls games, you know, they'll always be a large part of me as a gamer and as, you know, just as a person. In the past, like, five, six years of my life were, you know, spent with these games that are just, you know, utterly brilliant. Um, and here we get two options here. Do we want to summon the Firekeeper? I decided, you guys are wondering why I did it so quick, I decided a long time ago that I did want to uh, kind of end the game this way instead of the traditional way. And there is actually a third ending, and if you if you really want to delve into it, there's actually a, a hidden fourth ending. Um, but I decided to go this way. And you guys may hate me and be disappointed, and you know what? This is my game. You guys go out, buy the game yourself, figure it out. Fuck you. In in the best way possible, though. In a loving way. You know, I mean, there's some good fucking going on. I mean, you can you can be fucked like in a bad way, but you can definitely be fucked in a good way. And that's what I wish upon you guys. Like I told you, I like I know I know ladies. And I wanna be the bad boy. So if you guys don't recall, we gave her the eyes of the firekeeper, and the eyes of the firekeeper let her see the world for what it truly is. Generally, firekeepers are not allowed to have eyes because they see what the world could be like without the flame, and their whole reason for existence, their whole being is bent on protecting the flame and so we kind of corrupted her against her own duty but in a way if you want to look at it in a positive light like we opened her eyes in a like literally <laughs> the first flame quickly fades darkness will shortly settle
that one day, tiny flames will dance across the darkness. Like embers linked by Lord's past. So we basically, uh, you know, doomed the world to, uh, you know, large, you know, probably a couple millennia of darkness and suffering. Uh, but as a, you know, no biggie. But as basically as the as the wonderful lady was saying. Ashen one, hearest thou my voice still? Yeah, dog. What's up? Hey, trophies. And that is Dark Souls Three. Mecha Will presents Dark Souls 3, so From Software presents. I had no correlation with, with this game. I present my series that presents this game. So what can we say about Dark Souls? Um, I strongly believe it's it's one of the greatest games of all time. Uh, one of the greatest series of all time. I, I hold each and every game in super high regards. And this one, I mean, it, it, it did nothing to dissuade me from that. It... It's it holds its own as again one of the best games not only of like the generation but of gaming like in general you know we we talk about a lot of our favorite games you know a lot of people will mention you know some of the original Legends of Zelda games you know some of the old school like pioneers like Castlevania and Metroid and Mega Man and this game is is something special and playing through this game really just helped me rekindle <laughs> pun intended. Um, a lot of my love for the series it, it just it always reminds me every time I play these games why they're so brilliant they're just they're beautiful games I recommend them to anybody this game is no exception it's got so many great um, events and sequences in it there's a lot of depth to it which I love you know I mean the design was on point a lot of people wanted for like maybe a more vertical design like Dark Souls 1 that had maybe some more shortcuts and stuff but I think it was brilliant um, it was very, it was very poignant. It was very uh, sorrowful and tragic-filled game, as the ending of this series should be, and it had so many great boss encounters. I mean, you know, some of my more favorites, even though they went by quickly, you know, Lothric and Lorien, you know, the princes and the lore behind these. I, I just can't wait for the DLC. I can't wait to learn more about Kath and Frampt. And once the DLC is over, it's going to be really a final end, and that's probably going to make me cry a little bit. And I'll do that off camera so you guys don't call me a pussy because, you know, I cry a cry the video game. So, you know, I, I, how do I rate these games? How do I how do I say what needs to be said about these games? Well, let's just start with the end of the game. A brilliant ending. Um, you know, we fought ourselves. We fought the conglomeration of, of everybody that fought hard to fight the flame. And me, being the dickhead that I am, I decided to end the flame once and for all. But as you can see, you know, one day through the darkness, the, the embers are going to start to dance across the, uh, you know, the sky. You know, this is why, you know, with both of those endings, the lighting the fire and taking the fire away, it's never really a definitive ending because we need one without the other. And, uh, you know, it'll continue. It gives me a little bit of heart to kind of think about, like, you know, the way that different characters were coming back in these cycles. You know, one could postulate that the cycles themselves might repeat, and in a, in a correlation to, like, real game life, what that means is that this one ends, you know, we choose the darkness or the flame, it doesn't matter, the flame or the darkness will come back, and then we can find ourselves playing Dark Souls 1 again in a continuation of the series. Basically, Dark Souls 1, 2, and 3, as much as the contents of their game are a cycle, and we can cycle the games for the rest of our lives. But I'm going to be very sad to know that there's no more Dark Souls games coming out. Although I do think that they'll maybe rest on their laurels, you know, for a while on these games. But I think they will come back eventually because there's something really special about these games. Um, I, I highly, you know, I, I hold in contention that these games are, are the best. If not some of the best, then the best um, games of all time. So if you guys share my sentiments, you know, I totally understand. If you guys don't, you know, there's plenty of other pieces of art out there. We just finished Shadow of the Colossus, another brilliant game, but I thoroughly enjoyed this game. There's so much to do, so much to go back to. Uh, there's a lot of stuff to, to kind of put together. And then, of course, at the end, you know, I mean, once you've said and done it all, as long as they keep their servers up, we've got PvP for, for days. And the PvP in this game, you know, could be touched up a little bit. Obviously, there's some, there's some issues that if you look at the community, you know, they're having some issues with, but there's a lot of, uh, of longevity in this game. There's a lot of a lot of stuff to do and go back to. And even when all the servers have died, 
you know, playing through this game's story is going to be just a special thing. And if I, if I ever, I'm thinking real far ahead into the future right now, if I ever have, like, a large amount of children, I'm talking eight to nine little bumpkins running around, I'm going to sit their fat asses in front of a TV screen. I'm going to make them play these games. Um, you know, if you have family or something like that, or people that like video games, or best friend, or a, a significant other or something like that, sitting them down in front of these games, you know, I mean, it's, it's essential. These games are an essential piece of art to the human existence. And uh, anybody that says differently can fuck right off. So, to basically sum it all up, the game itself is brilliant. It's beautiful. Lots of great enemy types. I really liked the way that it was paced. You know, there's some sections that are a little bit more difficult than others. And a lot of the game has a lot of difficulty attached to it, which is funny saying that. But... Um, you know, there's some, there's some tough sections in the game. I guess I wish maybe the last thing is that it might be, you know, I wish it'd be a little bit longer. I think this one did clock, you know, at least for me as like one of the shortest time playthroughs of both games. Um, Dark Souls 2 was a really hefty, really meaty game and I really appreciated that about it. So much to do and, and fight there and I would have loved a little bit more from this, but hopefully the, the DLCs can expand on that. I, beyond that, I have no criticisms. I mean, there's really not too much that can be said. Um... A lot of stuff, I mean, you know, the, the last thing I might say, there's a couple of things in this game that are, like, incredibly vague. And, you know, the name of the game for Dark Souls is being vague. But, you know, there may be some things that could have been a little bit easier to figure out as long as you did the investigating work that's required, you know, in-game. Uh, but as you can see, we kind of, we're, we're going to stick around in, in our first journey so we can finish up a couple of things in the land and do some PvP and figure it all out. But that'll be the end of the playthrough. Uh, we'll, we'll start to host some some different videos for PvP and stuff like that. Possibly some lore or something in-depth later on. But if you guys like Dark Souls, uh, you know, please consider subscribing to my channel. Um, it, it helps me out. And beyond that, it'll let you, you know, notify you when new videos of mine come out. I, I love Souls. So you guys can probably hear in my voice the passion I have for the series. And uh, I will be doing lots more content. Um, you know, as long as I can on this channel for that kind of stuff, as well as a lot of other stuff. So hopefully you guys see some, some value in that. Um, if you guys like the video and like the series, I mean, please hit the like button. It really helps me out as a, as a small, smaller channel and, and, uh, and a smaller series as well. Um, kind of gets the, the word out for the game a little bit more, which is cool. Um, and then, you know, I guess, I don't know. I really appreciate you guys sticking around and watching the content, uh, that I've made. It, you know, it's, Let's Plays are like the, the less meaty form of, of content for YouTube, or not meaty, but you know, it doesn't require too much editing and that kind of stuff, but it still requires a lot of effort to commentate and, and on my part, so I appreciate you guys supporting me for for everything. Thank you guys uh, so much for dropping by. We'll end the series off here, and uh, and we'll move on to bigger and better things. I appreciate you guys dropping by, and I, I, I'd also like to shout out a big thank you to Dark Moon Knight for playing through me in the end of the in the end of the game here. Um, stick around; there's so much more to come, and, and lots more on my channel. Uh, thank you guys so much, and I'll see you next show.